DreamHack Las Vegas had a great venue, production team, bonus video series, playoff, and desk especially Thorin. But a lot of this was overlooked by some due to the pretty small turnout in terms of the crowd. There were some good criticisms of NA's attendance, such as Sadakiss' interview, but I believe the current interpretation by them may not be correct, and that NA doesn't need less events. First, let's look at the crowd. Based on this picture, even though some of the sides were kinda blocked from the camera, I counted 271 people. Then again, some of the back were pretty hard to see, so I may be off by quite a bit, but the point is, yes, there were not a lot. But NA itself being the problem doesn't line up historically. To see this, look at IEM Oakland, New York, the E-League Major, MLG Columbus, and the list goes on. So it seems that there was something different this time, but what was it? First we'll delve into the individual problems of Las Vegas, and then address the most well-written claim that I could find saying that America is the problem and not Las Vegas. Many Reddit comments in DK's article bring up the geographical point. It's in the middle of a desert. The closest big city, Los Angeles, is a whole 270 miles away, or 435 kilometers. Now, this may not sound like a lot, but this in Europe is close to Cologne to Lep Le Leipzig? Leipzig. No, I'm not pronouncing that. Which is a large portion of Germany horizontally. America is just a big frickin' place. To go from Southwest California to Maine is the same from Lisbon, Portugal to Moscow, Russia. Now, you may say that this is good evidence that events shouldn't be held in the US because it's so big, but I wouldn't jump to that. Population density in the US is densely packed into certain areas. If we put a 150 mile circle, a two hour drive, which is probably the most a lot would like to drive to go to a CS event, and we put it around Las Vegas, the population is two million. But if we put it around Philadelphia, the population jumps to 40 million. Even putting it around Ohio brings a higher population population, and quite a bit so. Now, of course, credit where credit is due. If we put the circle over Cologne, you get 60 million people. But I hope most of us can agree that just because one area is more dense than the other doesn't make the other completely obsolete. Just less dense. We can't have every event at Cologne, right? That'd be way too much. If you've been to a middle school locker room, you know how bad this would be. So Las Vegas was a bad choice population-wise. Los Angeles to Las Vegas is a four-hour drive on the interstate. Compared to other NA events in this 150-mile circle, the closest to Las Vegas was, funny enough, the major in Atlanta. But it had 12 million people inside of it, or six times as many as Las Vegas inside of the circle. A tour city doesn't mean a large population, just an economy that largely benefits from tourism. My city is a tourist city, and it is 60,000 people. Next, the actual population of those inside the area. Let's look at a population pyramid of Las Vegas. You see that dip between the teen years? The one that is not present for other successful cities in America hosting CS tournaments? This is pretty significant. Let's compare the Las Vegas pyramid to the Counter-Strike pyramid. This is one I made on a survey that happened a year ago, so it may have shifted one way or another due to Reddit or the time since then. But this should give us a general idea. It really misses the mark. Almost beautifully. Las Vegas declines as CS increases, and then increases when CS declines. This teen dip usually happens in areas that are more for urban dwellers, like Las Vegas. For adults that would want to live close to the city because of schools and often prices, it's a bad choice to have a kid that would potentially be interested in CSGO. Instead, these big cities attract empty nesters, parents without kids that enjoy the urban life and not Counter-Strike, and thus make up a large population. Well, what about the actual event itself? As DK said in his great article touching on the topic, many people would just rather gamble than watch CS all day. But what about the League of Legends championship that occurred also in Las Vegas that had a pretty good crowd? The event was two best of fives for each day, which allowed them to explore the city and gamble away money for the rest of the time. While for viewers it was great having 10 hours of games and banter per day all weekend, for someone there with so much to do, well, why waste it sitting in a chair the whole time? You know the other events held in the MGM arena? Concerts. Short, one-day concerts that allow visitors to do whatever they want during the night. In all honesty, I bet a lot would have liked to see the awesome introduction to the finals. But at the time, sitting in a chair must have gotten pretty boring, considering how much there is to do in a city that never sleeps. Wait, no. That's the wrong city. Whatever. So if everything was just so wrong, well, why was it picked? Well, luckily an interview from Mark Winther gave insight into the idea of putting the event in Las Vegas. According to this interview, the idea wasn't due to getting a large crowd, but to treating the crowd that was there to a higher tier than they had in Malmo. From what I read, they did do just this, and the people that did go there were really satisfied with what they experienced. Unfortunately, for the rest of us that are usually spoiled with the awesome crowds, we had to suffer for one event. However, a few other comments makes me think he did approach Las Vegas a bit wrong. For one, he says that since Las Vegas had so much to do, they can have plenty to do and eat before and after the Masters, but didn't mention that the audience could be distracted during the event. You know, something that happened. 
We also think the show style of DreamHack Masters suits Las Vegas very well, and could be compared to many of the other sports and entertainment events happening on the Strip. The Strip being a road that runs across Las Vegas, that's pretty famous. The thing is, Counter-Strike isn't like the other sports with its 12-hour sport days of the same few teams all under the same arena. The only one that I could think of that was similar is tennis, but the sport has four Grand Slams, kind of like majors, that are located in the same spot each year, and that have plenty of people within them. He had boxing and hockey in mind, not a 10 hour CS game for multiple days. It's just not a perfect fit. So knowing all the information about Las Vegas, let's delve into Sadokist's own thoughts. Not because he's Sadokis, but rather since he's made the best argument that Las Vegas wasn't the fault itself, and instead it lies with American fans. In the first paragraph, he does address some of the points that were said, but he did disagree and say it was easy to get there since Las Vegas is a big event city. A problem with this is that the most successful tournaments in NA haven't been due to the city's specialty, but due to a large surrounding population. Take San Jose, for example. When you factor in the extremely low surrounding population compared to the other cities, the idea that it's just Las Vegas is not enough to pull to say that's not the problem. We both kind of agree on the 21 or over thing, but I would argue it's more about the current population situated there and not due to the pull for teens to go there. The second paragraph is the one I disagree with. According to him, there's a decline in the audience due to less excitement since there's so many more events now than there used to be. Now this may be an explanation, there have been a lot of NA events recently, but from what I can remember, this is the first big NA event with low attendance. If you believe that the E-League Major didn't have a large attendance, while well, this could be due to the small arena, I feel many may have been manipulated by the flybys that happened during breaks whenever people were getting food or whatever, and not during the games where it seemed to be jam-packed. While Sadokis may have merit to what he said in theory, there is more proof to point to a different problem, that the sweet, sweet numbers show that it's probably due to the location and characteristics of Las Vegas. So with the next two dream hacks, both in the near metropolis of Texas, I'm actually gonna go to the one in Austin, we'll see if this far denser population brings in the audience, or if Sadokist is right and NA is burned out after so long a few events. Then again, you could argue that these two and three months away events give more than enough time for a break for rehype. But this event to DreamHack Austin is the similar amount of time that it went from E-League Season 2 to the Major. So we'll see. Then again, we also have to keep in mind that Austin last year had less elite teams, which could be a factor. I don't know. We'll see in Dallas for sure. In conclusion, it appears that the distinct features of Las Vegas compared to the other events in the US led it to have poor audience numbers, because DreamHack's focus was said to be more on the quality for those there, and a misjudgment that Counter-Strike and other sports are related when it comes to events, and they should be fine to host events like they should, as long as they're placed in regions that better fit the number and demographic characteristics of the United States. Of course, it seems like it has been a while since a high-tier European event, so I'm excited to see the always well-praised Katowice crowd. Characterizing the whole United States as a bad crowd just because an NA team didn't make it is nonsense. Maybe I took the bait. Oh well.